there is a temptation here. If we're not mindful of this, that we're not of this world, that everyone who seeks to live righteously will be persecuted, right? The Apostle Paul. There is a temptation for Christians who may think, well, how will I make friends? How will I develop social status? How will I participate in community affairs? How will I raise my children and socialize them? And, and many, many other questions that we get all the time. He says, is this your main concern so that you may betray your faith in Christ at the threat of your exclusion from community status? So the elder goes right to the juggernaut, right? It's like, is that really what you're interested in? That's what's important to you? If you are interested in that, what will happen is you will end up betraying Christ in the faith. I mean, it's a pretty bold statement, right? If we persist in holding on to our Christian identity, when the time draws near, these people will not acknowledge us at all. Like, do not expect anything from those who reject Christ. They will they will pay no attention. They will give no credence, and they will consider all Christians to be freaks from society. Right? He says social misfits, but that's a nice way to say. I think for the contemporary society, look where they're going, how they're acting, and the kind of scandals that are coming out of Hollywood and other places. I mean, it's utterly debased. It's debauchery on display. These people are are going to be opposed to any kind of Christian virtue and Christian identity. Absolutely, right? The kind of people who are the elite that leads leads the Western world are utterly opposed to Christian morality, Christian ethos. And many of them are Satanists, if you want to be honest. Many of our leadership now is openly serving the enemy of salvation. So um, not all, of course, thank God, but there are many who who are part of the Satanic in the, in the elite and in Hollywood. And that's all not hard to find, right? Just look at the crimes that are coming out of Epstein Island and wherever else you want to look. So what's the meaning of the surrounding of the camp of the saints by the nations, right? What is the, what's the meaning there? Uh, we read to understand better before we get to that, answering that particular question. Um, we can understand a little bit of this attack on the camp of the saints uh, with the words of the Apostle Paul. He says in Corinthians 4, 12 to 13, when reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we try to conciliate. We have become and are now as the refuse of the world, the offscoring, peripsima, peripsima, of all things. We're the offscoring of all things, right? Everyone rejects us. We're the refuse of the world in the eyes of the worldly, right? The worldly have a total uh, inversion of the Christian virtues and Christian uh, vision of reality. Well, of course, they're going to be violently opposed to the Christian who, in, in, who embodies that, right? The word offscoring or peripsima is the kitchen counter cloth, the rag used to wipe off the crumbs from the counter and other debris from the kitchen counter or table. It's like, it's the worst, smelliest, you know, worthless rag that you got in the house. So the apostles have become the rags of the world, he says. Beloved, are we ready to become rags of the world? The, the elder asks. This is the meaning of the surrounding of the camp of the saints by the nations. That's how they view us. Worthless. All the God opposing powers will turn against the church and the remaining faithful in all geographical lengths and latitudes, because the devil will have great rage, all right? So wherever you are, people say, I'm going to go to the desert. I'm going to go to the mountains. I'm going to go, okay, wherever you are, he's saying, they will turn against us in those days and the church, all the members of the body, because of the rage of the devil, right? That's his main goal is to snuff out faith on the earth. So anybody who's resisting that is going to be in his crosshairs. But this will be the final action, as we said. It will take the form of unprecedented persecution and death, but it will be the end. It will be the last attempt and failure on the part of the enemy and the Antichrist. They will be utterly defeated. But this will be a time, there will be a time of great persecution. What's the meaning of the camp of the saints? St. Saint Andrew of Caesarea says, they will spread over all over the earth to the encampment of the saints to attack the church, which is established in the four corners of the earth. So just coming and 
confirming again what we've been talking about that all over the earth the camping is the camping is all over the earth and the attack of the church is all over the earth the church of course is universal and first and foremost we have to say catholicity this is just my little two cents because in the west we have a lot of confusion what does it mean to be catholic what does it mean catholicity one of the great tragedies of in the western world is that they've lost sight of the true meaning of catholicity and that is the word here is probably not catholicity but it's it's uh, ecumenicity or ecumenicotita but in any case uh, it's important to understand when we use the term in the Orthodox in the patristic context of the word Catholic, it means of the whole, catholo, right? That's what it literally means, of the whole. In other words, there's nothing missing. It has integrity. It's the whole thing. And so when we talk about the Catholic faith, we mean the whole revelation is preserved. It does not mean primarily geographical extension. This is also, a, a, along with the error of the papal Protestants, Roman Catholics out there who are trying to, you know, polemically deal with the orthodox criticism of the doctrines they turn against the limit geographical limit of the church you know or historical limit to the east or to the persecutions and that we were the church was overrun by the muslims and all these are supposedly arguments against the truth of orthodoxy and they say well see we're the catholic church because we're we're spread all around the whole world well orthodoxy is in, you know, not number wise, but it is geographically found all over the world, increasingly uh, in, in, more and more as more, more and more people become Orthodox. But that's not even an issue, though, uh, because that's not what Catholic means. <laughs> it it has as, at best a secondary meaning, but the primary meaning in the creed is not the geographical extension, but the wholeness of the of the revelation. Uh, so. That goes along with the, the you know the other ideas about uh, numbers being a sign like if you have big numbers that's a sign of the truth no it's not it's never been a sign of truth the church was a tiny little you know from the eyes of the world a tiny little sect in judea right that's how it started 12 70 a couple hundred a couple thousand on, on on pentecost it was tiny and yet it grew and it grew and it grew but it it can it's going to go back it's at the end of the world. We just said there's going to be few who who are faithful, so that's not a a touchstone. It's not a criteria for the truth of of the gospel and the truth of the church. So the church is universal. It does absolutely extend to all the all the parts of the earth in the sense that the mission is to everyone on the face of the earth and all to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And since Christianity has spread around the world, the attack will also take on global dimensions. The sacred text here calls the faithful a camp, a term analogous to the people of the Old Testament. When the Jews journeyed in the desert after leaving Egypt, they were called an encampment of the Lord. So camp, elect, these are similar ideas, right? Small, small group of the faithful flock, right? The do not, do not, you know, weary, do not be upset, little flock, little, the little flock, right? This is a pertinent comparison wishing to show that the church of the end times and the faithful will find themselves in similar conditions and circumstances as the ancient Israelite encampment in the desert. And I might add as the early church, which was small, but the same thing applies. So that's a super important characteristic of the end times. There will be few. They'll find themselves in similar conditions and circumstances. They will be in the desert places. They, elsewhere in Revelation, we read uh, that the mother, the, the, that the woman representing the church will be driven into desert places, right? And, and in the wilderness. And so the same thing will happen for the church in those days. I see on this field. 